Thanks for joining us, everyone. Thanks for joining us again here on Astrology Today with Jeff Harmon. I'm Ella Jeff's assistant. Great to see you all. Hope you're doing well. Gosh, we are going to go into great disasters that happen in this world. Obviously, everyone knows about this tragic, tragic situation in Maui. Um, we've just uh, hit on September 11th. Can't believe that was back in 2001. And Jeff's going to talk about how these great disasters can be found in the astrology. And it's not about predicting them. It's about analyzing the astrology and seeing that it's there. So let's get started, Jeff. Let's get started. You know, I'm, I'm glad you brought that up that way. You know, one thing that always bothered me about astrology is so, like, you know, I, I am in some ways the reluctant astrologer. I never wanted to be an astrologer. I, I grew up, you know, driving semis and, you know, logging jammers in northern Wisconsin and, you know, was into electronics, electricity, construction, music, uh, recording studios and electronics, all this stuff. And, um, you know, I, I always kind of cringe a little bit when, some, you know, somebody in secular society says, well, what do you do? And I have to go, well, I'm an astrologer. So it's like, I, I like it and I love it because I see the help it gives people. But it always made me a little bit queasy because people in the hard sciences always walk away. It's like, uh, though I think they're getting a little better, but they walk away with kind of a eyebrow raising. Hmm, I don't know about that stuff. Right. But you just brought it up best because many, well, I should say almost all of the disasters throughout history. If we go back as far as you can go, the Kings, the Queens, the Pharaohs, the Masons, the presidents, Ronald Reagan was so into astrology. They, they blame it on Nancy, but he really was into astrology. I know for a fact, because Carol Ryder, who I knew in his latter years, I can tell you right now, literally was his astrologer, not Nancy Reagan's astrologer, even though she used him, but it was his astrologer. And he was with him. He actually swore him in at 12.02 midnight as the governor of California to get a good astrological time. And throughout Reagan's presidency, he was secretly using the timing of electional astrology. And back to the topic at hand here, uh, the Maui fires happened precisely. Remember I said last podcast, I said, watch out, something weird's going to happen. Well, it did. The Venus retrogradation, which is going into the sun on the 12th, right? So it's it's uh, actually on the 13th, which is, you know, Sunday, is exactly when it aligns with the sun, that's when a lot of strange, weird happenings. And of course, don't bet on our news for telling us the real stuff that happened, but we certainly heard about Maui and there's all kinds of conspiracy theories floating around. I cast an interrogation and I, I really think for what it's worth that it did happen because of the debris that was on the Island, according to the chart. And there could have been either electrical uh, something involved in the heat and all of that, I think, was a combination that caused this, where there was just so much fuel for the fire, kind of like the ones in California were sparked by a fire, um, or I should say an electrical issue. And of course, all the lack of cleanup by the state had all this, you know, wood and, and debris around and it, and it caught on fire. Uh, what is important about the astrology is Venus retrograde was squaring Uranus between August 8th and the 10th, and it's slowly separated. That is precisely when the Maui fires broke out. The other interesting thing is I did take a quick look at the incorporation date of Hawaii. And what's interesting is Venus was retrograde right over the, um, the conjunction of the Hawaiian Venus. So that was kind of interesting. And also, too, I found that uh, Uranus... Uh, by solar arc is conjuncting the ascendant of Hawaii plus uh, primary directed Neptune and all these are fancy terms. It just means progressions and transits did kind of line up with some strange happenings. And I wouldn't be surprised if we hear 
about a little more strange stuff in the Hawaii area over the next year or so, being these progressions are in what we call orb. So I would bet that there's other strange things that happened throughout the world. We just probably didn't hear about them. The Maui stories got the press that they got because they were so devastating and horrible. And it really sounds like a lot more people died than they even know right now, which is really saddening. I actually have several clients over there. So I hope they're okay. And it's very tragic that this happened. But it was definitely a strange occurrence. There was reports that there were strange events that were around it. And again, I'm not here supporting or unsupporting conspiracy theories. I'm just saying that's the nature of the astrology of Uranus and Venus retrograde square. So <clears throat> definitely showed up. Just to touch on the celebrity thing for a second, I it really just bothers me that that all always has to come up about, well, this celebrity was affected and, or that celebrity wasn't affected. At the end of the day, it's about people, it's right? True. It's about people. And why do we always have to bring it? I mean, I know why we do it, but um, it really is about people that live there and the people that are completely devastated. You know, somebody like an Oprah Winfrey or Jeff Bezos, okay, yes, they're affected, but their whole life wasn't devastated. A vacation home was taken out, you know, or um, affected. But what's really happened to the people who live there, you know, their whole lives were just taken from them in, oh, yeah. in the sense of the everyday living. That's right. Well, I always say the richest person in the world, the most powerful person in the world, will get out of planet Earth with the exact same amount of money as the poorest person in the world. Right there. Zero. Nothing, nothing. <laughs> and, th and that's the same thing they came in with, too. Uh, nothing. That's right. <laughs> right. That's right. So you don't take it with you. It's all here to be enjoyed. So, yeah. 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 Talking about this devastation and how we can see it in the astrology. So you just spoke about Maui. Um, September 11th was back in 2001. Clearly, you looked at that many, many times. Uh, through the eyes of the astrology. And, and what did you see there? Oh, it's the same thing. I, I'll never forget there. I don't know if anybody knows him, but his name is Arch Crawford, a good friend of mine. Haven't spoken to him for a while, but Arch was known as another one of the Wall Street astrologers. And he and I used to hang together a long time ago. And um, Arch is getting pretty on in years now, but a really nice guy, good astrologer. And he and I were speaking, I remember, in Tucson, Arizona, um, uh, he was in Tucson. I was in uh, Beverly Hills at the time. And I'll never forget being on the phone with him. I said to him, I said, Arch, something big's coming down. This was literally two days before 9-11. Why did we say that? Well, the Saturn-Pluto opposition was in play. And literally a day and a half later, I'm walking through the living room and I'm watching the first tower come down like sparklers from jet fuel. And and of course, shortly thereafter, the second one. And it's interesting about the astrology because if we go back through all of the major events, the what I call chapters in society, they are marked by major planetary astronomical alignments, the big ones. Particularly, COVID happened precisely on the Saturn-Pluto conjunction. The 9-11 happened on the Saturn-Pluto opposition, and the banks crashed in 2008 on the Saturn Pluto square. Now, if we go back further, we can see when Nixon took us off the gold standard, we can see all kinds of things, the fall of communism. We see, you know, uh, the, the events that happened in World War I, World War II, World War, you know, or not, of course we are not in, we're almost in World War III. But, uh, but bottom line is, uh, hopefully not, I really hopefully not. But you can see these major events. And of course, as we get way back in time, William Lilly and, Guido Bonatti and many of your Egyptian Vedic, uh, you know, references to cycles of yugas and time periods throughout history. And this brings us back full circle to, I always kind of cringe when I get around the hard scientists, you know, and I, I've actually worked with a lot of hard scientists in forensics and in electrical work and power line company monitoring, all this stuff. I had a lot of fun back in the eighties and early nineties. And, you know, they raise an eyebrow because astrology has been demonized by the religions and many, oh, it's the work of the devil. Well, no, it's not. It's really astronomy applied to life on earth. And Benjamin Franklin put out an almanac. It was called Poor Richard's Almanac 
for years. And if we go back into England and many of the, you know, European countries where the once the printing press was available, it was commonplace to look at this stuff. And of course, the church didn't like that because it took away their power, you know. So, um, and and again, I do see astrology can be misused, just like anything else. Um, you know, a can of gasoline can get you to the grocery store, but if you throw it on somebody's house, it could burn it down. So it's all intent and purpose. It's just like a gun can protect or it can kill. So uh, again, astrology can be misused. I'm very much against that, where you pick auspicious times to do bad things and get away with it. Not good. And I believe in karma because astrology shows, especially the Nadi and the Vedic astrology, you may think you're getting away with something, but you won't. It does seem like the great gig in the sky does keep track of what humans do down here with malicious intent. So very, very interesting stuff. So that's that's that news. Um, I think we wanted to talk about the new moon, right? Yeah, absolutely. But before we get there, can you speak to the point of prediction versus analysis Love in that. astrology? Uh, okay, great. Yeah, I kind of just did, but uh, yeah, let me re repreface that a little bit, maybe better. You know, truly, and I'm so glad you're bringing this up because that's always been an irritation of mine. That's kind of why I'm the reluctant astrologer. Is I always love helping people, and I see the value that this has brought to people's lives by looking at it from different perspectives. When I say looking at our lives, the cycles of our lives and all that. And, you know, I've always, the word prediction, I always kind of cringe when I get on radio shows. Oh, Jeff, can you predict the future for us? And I'm like, this isn't predicting the future. This is no different than a weatherman looking at a radar screen and saying to the people in Florida or the Gulf Coast or wherever it is that you've got a hurricane coming in. And we project is probably a better word that the hurricane's going to do X based on the conditions of the water temperatures, the winds, the currents, the blah, blah, blah. Right. So they either tell people get out of Dodge or stay put. It's going to go the other way. Right. And they can be off a little bit. This it, truly, truly traditional and Vedic astrology is exactly the same way. Analyzed properly. It's no different then analyzing electricity, Ohm's law, Kirchhoff's law. I don't know if anybody knows that stuff, but it's its really a, a very exact science of geometry and astronomy. So it's not predicting anything. It's projecting the probability of something happening. Like, you know, Ella, not to bring up anything, you know, disclosing you, but you just had a transit that was so powerful and you felt like you were in the twilight zone. It was a Neptune crossing your ascendant in your location astrology. I talked to thousands of people and it's been just sort of 50 years. I've been analyzing this stuff. And, uh, you know, I have to say, this isn't predicting the future or woo woo, or, you know, I don't have a turban on you guys see a turban um, <laughs> or any beads behind me. This, this is a science. It truly is. And many astrologers will say it's not, well, they're wrong. In my opinion, um, it is truly an astronomical geometric science. And it's all of geometry, squares and trines and oppositions. Same thing in Vedic astrology. And when you see these things, you're likely to see an event. No different than if we sat there and looked at a radar screen and said, well, we've got this land or this air mass hitting this air mass. The likely probability is going to be X, right? And you can even see by the natures of the planetary energies, there's zodiacal strengths and weaknesses and dignities, all this other complex stuff. Yes, it's complex. But once you analyze it as the science that it truly is, an astronomical science of geometry and dignities, you start seeing some very interesting results that correspond to everything going on on Earth. Like, for instance, the 9-11 the thing. I I mean, I said to Arch, I said, something big is going to happen. He agreed with me. So, yeah, something's going to happen on this one. And it did. Um, that changed the world. I mean, if anybody looks back and remembers the days before 9-11, you could run through an airport and jump on an airport. Wait, don't close the door. And they let you in. Now you're going to get shooken upside down, radiated, passed through, you know, detectors and everything else. And the world has changed. Of course, the Patriot Act has changed far, far deeper things that we'll ever know that the government can actually do on 
you know, looking at, at our various backgrounds based on a pro- potential allegation of something. So it is truly changed. Now, whether that's for better or worse, I'll leave that for you to decide. But um, clearly, the astrology throughout history has shown this thing. William Lilly put out a book that was quite interesting. He, it was called The Prophetical Merlin of England. And I have those books. And he would put out various different projections. In fact, William Lilly predicted the London fire, and they actually brought him into a tribunal at a court to convict him because they said, well, how did you know that fire? Did you have something to do with it? And of course, they proved he didn't, and he was released, but he had to explain to the judge back in the 1600s why he pre facto predicted, or if you will, projected that there was a probability of devastation on the city of London, which it nearly burned it down. In fact, the Chicago fire, I looked at that too. That was another one. It was a cow purportedly kicking over a uh, kerosene lamp and burned Chicago almost to the ground. And I remember that was shown too in the city of Chicago. We looked at that. Very interesting stuff. Wow. Well, thanks for breaking that down even more. So what about the the new moon? Uh, Is it the 17th? Uh, The new moon is actually on August 16th coming right up. And again, the new moons doesn't mean the world's going to end, right? Or Jesus is coming, though I wish he would. But the bottom line is on 816, you know, August of this coming Thursday, uh, we are going to have a new moon. Now, let me make sure I'm right there. The 16th is Wednesday. I said that wrong. It's this coming Wednesday, uh, unless, of course, you're on the other side of the world. You, you get it a day earlier. But uh, the bottom line is, uh, in the United States, it, the Eastern Daylight Time is going to be 5.38 a.m. if you're in the District of Criminals or on the East Coast. Um and for us on the West Coast, it'll be around 2.38 a.m. on Pacific Daylight Time in uh, August 16th. And that's interesting because um, this is a interesting new moon. Um, as I had mentioned in previous podcasts, every new moon will happen in a particular house. And remember, houses in astrology, to keep this simple, is the terrestrial divisions in your birth chart starting from the eastern horizon when you were spanked on the rear end and drew first breath. All of us have what we call the ascendant. It's just very simply the eastern horizon at the longitude and latitude at which you were born, right? So then we run what we call the 12 terrestrial, this is a fancy word, that means the houses going around broken up on the Earth's divisional uh, points. And each house rules an area of life. Well, you look at where does that new moon occur in your birth chart? And you'll find it has an uncanny uh, you know, manifestation the next month of issues connected to that house. See, like the first house is the physical self. People start working out, lifting weights, right? Or start a new regimen program, start thinking about changing their dress, their hair. If it's the second house, it's your money. If it's the third house, it's daily routines and writing. See, sixth house, pets, animals, and people you work with. Uh, Seventh is partnerships and relationships. It's in the 10th, it's career. So everybody is going to have it happening in some house. And specific aspects to your chart meaning the geometry that that new moon forms when it happens to the rest of your chart has a big impact. And of course, you have to look at all the outer transits, progressions and directions and doshas in relationship to that. And that's where your eyeballs kind of cross and you have to really get into the depths of astrology. And it is complex. It's exceedingly complex, but it's also exceedingly accurate when you do. So, Anyways, that's the new moon. And I want to mention something on a global kind of area for this new moon. In Vedic astrology, this is happening in the final aspect of a lunar mansion called the Slesha. And a Slesha is very, very interesting. We won't get into that. It'll take too long. But it's right at what we call the fourth pada. Pada is a fancy word that just means it's the final fourth stage of the 13 degree, 20 minute lunar mansions that surround the earth, which I always joke around with the astronomers. I don't care how much they polish the lenses on their telescopes. They're not going to see that zodiac either. It's a spiritual angelic construct of a lunar system, a 
around the earth, which is quite interesting, very sacred, very interesting stuff. And this is all out of Vedic astrology. So the, and the Egyptians had a 28 lunar mansion. Anyways, we won't get into all these details, but the fascinating stuff. So the bottom line is in the Vedic astrology, it's going to be shifting from a Shlesha into the next lunar mansion called Maga, which is a strange word, and it's ruled by Ketu. And you might say, okay, so what? What does that mean? Because that's what I would say. Um, it means change. So expect a lot of shifting this month as the new moon and the sun leave sidereal Leo and shift into this new lunar mansion. So very, very powerful. So you always got to look at these things they are much more complex than we can get into during this podcast, but fun stuff to throw up there to have people just to get in touch with. It's uh, it's the etheric energy that the modern world keeps us away from, the spiritual forces that are always upon us. Well, thank you, Jeff. Thank you for this. Thank you, everyone, for joining us. We're sending our blessings to everyone who's going through such a difficult time in Maui. And thanks so much for your comments. We really appreciate them and for joining us each week. And we'll see you next time on Astrology Today with Jeff Harmon.